Break Show Live, where we control our own narratives and have the conversations that we need to have in order to better our community. Today, let me introduce my guest, Ish. Hi, everybody. Do you want to say your formal name, or is Ish fine? Ish is fine. Okay, so it's Ish. Today's topic is all about reasons to boycott Asian businesses. There have been several cases where Asian store owners have been brutalizing black women, black people in general. Um, they they carry us with this hurry up and buy mentality, which we don't appreciate and we, ha we spend a lot of money with their, those businesses. So instead of supporting something that takes us for granted so much, it's the people who constantly mistreat us, we can kind of spend that money with our own people and learn how to regain our community back. And we can start getting more political clout because we'll have more of an economic base. So like I said, today's topic is boycotting Asian businesses. Which brings us to uh, the first part of the show, which is called Black Business on Black. She's an artist, she's a freelance painter, and she has a lot of good stuff for us to see today. Black Business on Glass is where we showcase and we promote black businesses who are doing things to empower black people in the black community and um, what's some really dope stuff for us to purchase. So Ish, please tell us about what you do and your paintings and your artwork and things like that. All right, well, like she said, like Sabre stated, I'm a freelance painter. I've been painting since July, yeah, this past July. That's um, it? That's it, that's it. Oh my um, God, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I mean, it started out of boredom. Um, over the summer, I wasn't working because I worked for the school system. So yeah. I was extremely bored and I was like, all right, I'm picked up. I already had the brushes and the paint. Yeah. So I had some empty canvases and I was like, all right, just go to town. I uploaded the images on Instagram and yeah. people were really supportive. And I was like, okay, well, this can be lucrative for you. So that's really how I initially started. Wow, that's really impressive because like her work right here, it looks like you've been doing it for years. It's like since you were a kid. You know, I know you have to get that a lot. I do, I do. People are always like, July, like a couple months ago, July. Yes. I'm like, yeah, like, I mean, it's seemingly becoming a passion of mine and I'm really happy because I went through college not knowing what I wanted to do. Yeah. And to be at this point now, like I'm very happy. Um, I make feel good art. Well, yes. it feels good. It feels good to yeah, me. Yeah, so and I it want to, Exactly. I want to exude that through my artwork. So this is one of my popular pieces. One of my more popular pieces. Yeah. Can you show them the I other can, painting I that can. I love so much? I can. So this is my home girl. Treat yourself. Um, yes. Yeah. I um, love that. Yeah. So like I said, you'll always see like brown faces. Mm -hmm. Brown, you know, just representing us as a yeah. culture. Um, I love the pops of color, and a lot of people always say, you know, what was the inspiration? And I would say Grace Jones a little bit. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that from the um, the cheekbones mm -hmm. and the flat top. That yeah. is really cool, and the skin color. Yeah. I love it, and it's like an ice cream cone. Say you treat yourself. That is a cute piece. So yeah, this is one of my favorite pieces. I haven't sold it yet, so if you guys are interested, it is on my website. Up yes, the and I want to show them these pieces here. And these are girls, women, of course, with melanin, mm -hmm. and it's super cute. I'm definitely, I'm gonna put them in my daughter's room. Yes, just yes. like this, side by side. And um, I think it's really, really cute, especially for the girls. You would you would be surprised how many young black yeah. girls who self-esteem is low because of their hair texture exactly. or their skin color. And so that's, that's the, very empowering for them. And that's the point of it. Like that's the point behind it, because we're black women. Yeah. So we know how it feels to come up when you know in a society that tells us our hair isn't straight enough. Yes. You know our skin isn't light enough. And that's the point of my art. She always make art centered around yeah. our culture, African American. American culture. I'm gonna do that until I'm done painting. Don't forget to visit her website that's that's being here below. Purchase some art, share it with your friends, Christmas gifts, Mother's Day gifts, Father's Day gifts. Do you have something for yes, guys? I do. I have some she masculine has, pieces. She has masculine pieces for the guys. You know, if you're into interior decorating, you wanna just freshen up the look of your home, art is definitely a great yes, piece. It is. 
quick. So like I said, today's topic is boycotting Asian businesses. So I know people out there are probably like, she's a racist. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm not racist. First of all, black people cannot be racist according to the definition of racism. But we're not gonna get into that. Right. But I'm not being, you know, discriminatory or prejudiced or no. anything like that when I bring up this topic, even though it sounds a little crazy. We've been handing our money to this specific group for so long, you know? And it's time to kind of like not be so reliant on yeah. them. So I want to, um, have you, have you, I know you, you shop in a lot of Asian businesses mm -hmm. because they're all around our yeah. neighborhoods. So what has your experience been like? Um, more so, you know, beauty supply stores, of course. Yes. But it's always this, you know, like you said, this hurry up and buy mentality. Like, mm -hmm. we, I know we're your top consumers. And yeah. I think we, as in African American women, mm -hmm. are your top consumers. So for you to have a mentality as, you know, we're hindering your business is, it doesn't make a pleasant shopping experience for us at all. So I'm pretty sure all of us can say, you know, you don't feel welcome when you go right. in certain, you know, establishments like that. Nine times out of ten, you're not really even greet, you know, greeted when right. you come in. So it is an issue because you want to make sure when you're spending money, when you're investing in whatever you're investing in, yeah. that it's money well spent, and that starts at customer service. That is so true. That is very true. And one of the first reasons to boycott Asian businesses is they don't put that money back into, into our into the community that they're making money from. Their money stays in their community. Actually, their money uh, circulates 120 times more than it circulates in ours. I believe that. Like <laughs> that is fact. So you can look that up. So if any, if you have a, a lot of money, if you make a lot of money from some people, then common sense is to okay well let me do something let me donate here let right. me give some of uh, more of them jobs let me do whatever they don't do that no. they go right back they look out for their own their own and that's the problem that us as black people we need to take that ownership back exactly we should do the same thing we instead should. of thinking that if we do it that we're racist or that we we only look out for our right. own. We're exactly. like you know prejudiced and, and, and whatever, we don't want to we don't want to dismiss anybody. But yeah, I think that uh, <laughs> that comes from that black forgiveness too. Yeah, because honestly, you'll see the images that not even just see the images, you know, the recent images of the video or whatever, but you'll experience the experience yep. of not being wanted and you'll still go back. And yes. I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. It's been times where I'll be like, I'm not going to that place again. I'm not. And I'll be right back there. Mm -hmm. So it comes from, you know, accountability too. And speaking, you were speaking on the video of the young lady from um, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. She was going into... A beauty supply store and they accused her from, of stealing some three dollar four dollar eyelashes right. and before you know it the asian store owner is kicking her and brutalizing her and beating the shit out of her yeah, and choking he her in. out he went in like he choked her out air garner style yeah like she could have died she was a heavy set woman and and she was just on out like how did this i think how did this it, little it guy get her down like that and then how is the woman uh rec her friend recording and not and helping, not helping. But, we will get there. We will get there. But she's recalling that situation, and we want to get there a little bit later. But the second reason of uh, not to of why not to uh, support Asian businesses is um, majority of the nail salons, beauty supply stores, dry cleaners, and convenience stores that they have in our neighborhoods. We are perfectly capable of owning yeah. those businesses. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of good black nail techs. They're, they're running the cleaners yeah. in a, a beauty supply store is not that difficult mm -hmm. and we can do it ourselves but not if we allow them to continue to have a monopoly exactly. over the situation there exactly. every corner you turn in the black community every sh every single shopping center is has those three businesses they have those three businesses or four businesses they're asian owned yeah and actually um asians are five percent of the population mm -hmm. we're 13, 13 or whatever they own way more businesses than we, than do. we do than we do statistically and they own they're right up under white people as far as business ownership and it's, it's crazy because a lot of times you notice like asian people assimilate to you know white mm -hmm. culture so yes. it's like 
you're not really good enough to fit in with white people but you think you're too good to you know be among black people right. which is the issue it's like oh at least we better than them. exactly so let's where show, we got one up them. on you but demographically it's more of us mm -hmm. than you which is the problem why don't we own these establishments right well at least have uh, yeah you know the third reason to boycott asian businesses is because from my experience mm -hmm. a lot of them are dirty and have terrible service and that's not 100 percent. i'm pretty sure somebody out there is like that's not all the way true okay from my experiences most mm -hmm. of them when you they are dirty and terrible service when you go to like certain nail salons especially when they're more urban communities yes it's like we know that you're going to come here anyway because yep. you know where else you gonna go right exactly so a lot of us you know we accept bare minimum right if, if you put it in a you know let's just say a middle class you know in, um community it won't oh, look they're not gonna play that yeah. they're not gonna play the the conditions are unsanitary sometimes sometimes they'll be up in there eating sometimes i've seen them and this is i walked out from a nail salon mm -hmm. from that they instead of uh, after they did a pedicure instead of spraying no. it down with antibacterial spray no. they rinsed that <laughs> motherfucker out and put the next woman in the chair put the foot in there mm -hmm. people have foot funguses and yeah. you know, all these type of things when you go to get your license you learned about uh, sanitation mm -hmm. because you can spray a disease. Mm -hmm. I've seen them rinse it out. And then technically, I've learned this from a nail tech, a black nail tech. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to use a new... You are. Um, You're supposed to use a... Pet. I had my nail license back in 08 yeah. I never renewed it but you're supposed to use a new file a, a new, new file for every, for every client. client they use the same nail file for at least what a few months probably but like it's always old it I'm comes like, no. down to like accountability and asserting ourselves yes. as, black, as black people and like I said that black forgiveness you know we don't like to step on people's toes right. a lot we'll of step on our own toes exactly right. exactly before we step up like that's not cool yeah. it's just not it's not cool and why do you keep investing in services in these places when you don't have to that's true when i used to work in this other barbershop because y'all know if y'all know me i'm a barber i used to work in this barbershop mm -hmm. where next door we were for uh we worked next to an asian carryout mm -hmm. an asian owned carryout something happened with the water the landlord or whatever mm -hmm. we didn't have any running water for a day or two for whatever reason that was happening whatever mm -hmm. underground or whatever and the Asian business next to us didn't have water either because the whole strip mall didn't have water right. and they were still running. They were still in business. How are you washing your hands? How are you cleaning the food, cleaning the food clean, rinsing off the food because you have to rinse off veg vegetables and mm. meats? You, how are you cleaning your pots and pans? Like, How are you still open for business yeah. with no running water? That should just trip me yeah. out right there. <laughs> and I was like, I would never eat there. Exactly. Like, ever. I barely ate there right. already just but because of the myths <laughs> of the carryout. Exactly. But, oh my God. And that's another one, too. When you go anywhere in, like, D.C., Baltimore, any, yeah. like, urbanized community, all the carryouts look like, okay, we really about to eat yes. here. Yes. You know? And like, people so. still eat it's, there. Yeah. They get disrespected, still go there. Yep. You know, disrespected, still eat there, whatever. And they, we got to stop doing, we have to stop supporting them. Um, and the fourth reason, um, you touched on that actually, uh, they've always been racist. Mm -hmm. They, when they come here, they often want to identify with being white. Yep. And so they adopt those, that racism by shitting on black people. Mm -hmm. And uh, they kind of do have like the privilege of white people yeah. a little bit. Like a white people, the white society allows them to have certain yeah. privileges or whatever. And then and now that um, the Asian man, his name is Sung Ho Lim, and um, he's now in hiding. No arrests have been made. Uh -huh. The one who choked out and um, kicked. Uh, just assaulted the that black did. woman in the beauty supply store. Yeah. No arrest has been made. He's on the run. He's in hiding or whatever. You know, I don't know if he was on hiding on his own mm -hmm. or he's being protected. Right, right. I don't know, but and, and I want to say something too about the black forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Stop apologizing. Why are people apologizing? Yeah. Or why do people just want an apology? They went to the. It was some. It was um these uh, some black people going up to that beauty supply store saying like demanding an, an apology from him he don't need an apology right. 
No, like do to him what he's done to her. Right. You know, like some reciprocity there. You don't treat people like you want to be treated.